This is the original Bronx bomber himself. Please welcome Peter Karloftis. Hello, hello. I've got uh, three pieces here. They all take place behind a bar. This took place not far from here many years ago, exactly as it said. So we got three of them. The exquisite taste of clear bile. Quarter of four, 20 below. One bartender with brain light blinking, lock the door, lock the door, when of course said door burst open, wielding a brazen behemoth, sporting a dark blue snow-dusted peacoat, who was promptly employed a curt closed here, pal. He corkscrewed up and wrapped his claws around the bar rail. I leaned over and sighed, give it up, my good man. He broke the rail, lifting it skyward like a paralytic Thor, while using his other paw to swipe off the snot sickles from his face. I warned the swaying mass, I have a gun behind the bar. Trailing the rhetorical, should I shoot you now? <laughs> then my tongue lashed, you may find this hard to believe, buddy, but the proud owner of this shit house is times ten the asshole you are. And now I've got to tell him how his precious little bar rail was cracked off by mighty Joe Dung. <laughs> Pico passed me the pole and lowering his head in lament dislodged a phonic burp. I snapped, here it is, pal. You pay, then you drink, then you get the fuck out. He dipped, he, he, he slipped off his coat, covered a bar stool, and grunted, Zures on the rocks. Closing my eyes, I saw the owner filling the doers the day before with cut rate booze. <laughs> Sadly, I served Peacoat. He sucked up the drink, ice and all. His eyes jumped Jack Box Weasel. Then he puked clear bile across the bar. <laughs> As he rolled away, re-rigging his coat, he turned and said, Buddy, that was endures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was another time. Uh, it's just, these are all per second the truth, so. Rotate the fish. I was only working weekends, so my wife's I'm pregnant was the perfect time to show responsibility. I called on this guy, Nil Feast. His real name is Gil Weast. He owns Michael's Pub. And this is years ago. I called on a guy, Nil Feast, who wound up giving me two nights at his new place starting the following Tuesday. I achieved my goal with such swiftness that my wife now felt we had a future. Other than that, I tended bar in a clip joint. My partner was Bernie, a stand-up, all-around, fine-cut gem who hated the boss as much as I did. Regardless of the weather or who was president, I'd always find Bernie leaning on the back bar, chewing a cheap cigar, and following the race results over the phone. Friday after the sixth race, I told him about my new job. Bernie spit out his cigar and reared back cursing, You're working for Nil Feast? Fuck that miserable cocksucker. He screwed over my two pals, Manny Gordon and Jimmy Delito. He dialed the phone and lit a new cigar, advising me softly, keep an eye on him, kid. Watching Bernie tear up the losers aroused my iron coat of honor. Bernie was a sweetheart, and whatever he said was a page of concrete in my book. So if he said Nil Feast was a cocksucker, then by God, Nil Feast was. It was time to walk tall and do right by a friend. I called it to myself right there that if Nil Feast uttered one half word wrong, I'd be out the door before the little prick took his next breath. The following Tuesday, I stood behind an empty bar wearing a bright green apron. When the night manager handed me the bank, his voice trembled. Mr. Feast will be in soon. I primed myself for combat. After two coffees and three cokes, me and 20 stools saw action. A fair to midlife couple on a business tryst plunged in and started loin pawing. For our happy hour presentation, the chef brought out plates of fish, deep fried and blackened, to simulate thirst. Stimulate thirst, excuse me. I put a plate before the happy couple, but their hands remained occupied. 
Indifferently, I sat down. I set down the other plates in front of empty stools, thinking, what the fuck? Let's have a seven up. When in walked the boss, head twitching and coming at me like a pattern of falling dominoes. Nil feast combined three words. Rotate the fish. <laughs> fuck Audie Murphy and fucking John Wayne and motherfucking Gunga Din. I was out the door, apron off and two tall steps. I strolled into the first bar flashing a V sign. On the home front, my act of valiance received an antonym of enthusiasm. I hid in the kitchen for three days, most likely reading Celine. <laughs> Friday night after the sixth race, I relived each pivotal moment with Bernie. He pulled at his cigar laughing. Rotate the fish. Ha ha ha. He really said that. Ha ha. Nice work, kid. Here's the seventh. <laughs> Bernie didn't win the seventh. Other than that, there is no was it worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Over with a twist. We'll end with this, with a twist. Over. It is. After this. At least my rating. Then we'll have more. The night was near the wire when ill wind swept through the empty bar, blowing me an ass-drunk, off-duty cop, waving a ten and demanding uh, a beer, adding the buddies for life icebreaker, cold if you got. I gave him, I gave him a listless I got omitting that what I got was retina damage from seeing his face. <laughs> I did a quick shot. Tilting his bottle, he toasted, Beer's sure cold, buddy. I nodded with shot number two. Then this statue of pride said, Pow, one crime should result in a mandatory death penalty, and that's the crime of rape. I became a steamroller. And this bum was a bulge in the asphalt. I'd have shaved my body for an oompa band. Okay, pal, I theorized. Let's say a police officer wakes up one fine spring morning wanting to screw his wife, but she's not in the mood. So later on that day, he busts a kid who deserves another chance. But because this cop's holding his heart on, they put the kid behind bars where he takes it up the ass. And when the kid gets out, he commits a rape. Now, can you really sit here and tell me that you put this kid to death just because some cop couldn't fuck his wife one fine spring morning? <laughs> Hate on duty flared up, but only sputtered out. That's why we got guys in a world like you to think of things to say like that. When I heard him slam the door, I, pa I pocketed the change he left on the bar and got about as far in his world as you can on $7. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>